Hello everybody and welcome to the first edition of Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie Part 1! Welcome to Grunty Slayer! My name is Outrage Brush, and today we're gonna play a classic game from the Nintendo 64 era, and one of my personal favorite games of all time, it's Banjo-Kazooie. So without further ado, let's get started. Just going to delete the save that I had before. Yes, I want to erase the save. There we go, and let's get started. By the way, I'm not going to attempt to uh, emulate the voices because it's probably going to sound really annoying to you guys. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to stay quiet during these cutscenes. <laughs> There's not really too much of them anyway. Yeah, so basically we kind of have a Snow White type storyline here going on. And so our journey begins. Now the first thing that we're going to see here when we walk outside is this friendly little mole here. His name is Bottles. And he's going to tell us the controls, but I'm just going to skip through that because I've played this game lots and lots of times. And I pretty much know the controls like the back of my hand, so I don't really need him explaining the controls to me. And basically there is a kind of antagonistic relationship between Kazooie and Bottles, so... That kind of goes on throughout the entire game. Yeah, you're just kind of explaining everything that we just saw. Yeah, for some reason, Banjo decided to live right next to a mountain layer that had a giant witch's, faces on, giant witch's face on it. Not really 
too sure why he did that, but to each his own, I guess. Yeah, we don't need any training bottles. Yeah, we're, we're good bottles, yeah. Yeah, just give me the basic moves, and then we'll be off. Thank you. And this is Spiral Mountain. This is Banjo and Kazooie's, uh, I was going to say hometown, but it's not really a town. And it's uh, populated by giant carrots and onions and other assorted vegetables that we get to just kill for no reason. <laughs> Okay, and if you go over here, actually, if you had taken the time to listen to bottles, he could have, uh, he would have taught you a move right here. But I already know it, and it's the, uh, kind of, not really a double jump move, but I can't even remember what it's called. But it lets you get an extra honeycomb. And if you collect enough honeycombs, they will increase your life energy like the honeycomb just told us. Hello, Carrot. Goodbye, Carrot. And if we go over here, we see another honeycomb. I think there's actually... I think there actually is six honeycombs, just in Spiral Mountain itself. And behind this waterfall here is this little guy. He's basically the equivalent of a one-up. He's all oh, they call it an extra life in this game. I don't think he has an official name, but he's basically just a one-up. Okay, and if we go over here, I think there is a honeycomb at the top of this tree. Yes, there is. We also have flying cauliflowers for some reason. Spiral Mountain is, in, is definitely a strange place. And there is another honeycomb piece under the water here. I do like how in Vanja Kazooie, when you go underneath the water, you get this uh, nice aquatic theme of whatever uh, the world is that you're in currently. This is a neat touch from Rare. And you would learn another move here, but like I said before, we're not really. We didn't take the time to talk to bottles. This is the. Uh, I think the Beak Buster or the Beak Barge, I believe. Yeah, it's the Beak Barge. I think we learn the Beak Buster later. Hello. Goodbye. And I think we just have one more honeycomb piece to collect over here. Which we get by... Yeah, killing the cauliflower. <laughs> and we have six honeycomb pieces, and our life energy has increased by one, so there we go. That wasn't too hard. So now we're going to ascend Spiral Mountain here. See what goodies light the top of Spiral Mountain. Well, it's actually not going to be goodies. It's just going to be another conversation with Mr. Bottles. And he's going to tell me a bunch of useless information. Basically, he's just going to run over... Uh, <laughs> he's just asking me if I'm ready to tackle the witch yet. Yeah, yeah, sure. I know the controls. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. So now that we're done with the, basically the tutorial mission, we're going to head inside Gruntilda's lair. And in we go here to Gruntilda's lair. Now, right off the bat, this is the easiest jiggy you will get in the game, most likely. Because <laughs> it's just right here. Alright, and now we officially have enough jigsaw pieces to be able to open up World 1. So basically, Banjo's, 
Banjo Kazooie's journey would have ended right there if that jigsaw piece was not was you know conveniently not there. <laughs> but thankfully for us, it was. And it's just bottles explaining how to do this. And yes, 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 yes. And this opens the door to the first ever world in the game. This is Mumbo's Mountain. Mumbo's Mountain, the first world in the game. And also the easiest world in the game, as you're about to see. Alright, here we are in Mumbo's Mountain. This is, you know, well, like I said, the Spiral Mountain was basically the tutorial world. This is like the tutorial world part two, basically. Very easy world. They pretty much just hand out the jigsaw pieces in this one. Don't really have to, uh, you know, have too much effort to be able to find them. And it's here where we're pretty much uh, introduced to all the things that we will be collecting throughout the game. It's Mumbo tokens, uh, musical notes, Jinjos. They will all help us along our journey to defeat Gruntilda. Okay, these notes can kind of be hard to get because the swimming controls are not really too ideal in this game. Although, I'm not going to bash on it too much because it was an old game. It is an old game. And plus, swimming controls in most games have not been great anyway, so... Okay, this is always the first uh, jigsaw puzzle, jigsaw piece that I get over here is uh, this big gorilla named Konga. He throws oranges at you basically, what you have to do is just stand on the orange pads here and just wait for him to throw the orange and then move. Come on, Konga. There you go. Now we're just going to do it one more time. And there we go. There's the first jiggy. Pretty simple. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> hmm. You know, that can't be good for Kazooie eating all those jiggies. Because in the course of this game, you're collecting almost 100 jiggies, and that's. She's just eating a, a shiny gold puzzle piece, which can't be too good for her. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you gotta get the orange to this monkey here, and he calls us fat for some reason. Although I think Banjo is pretty fit in this game. Like I could see why I could see him calling him fat in, say, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, but not Banjo Kazooie. I mean, Banjo is pretty fit in this game. Okay, jigsaw number two. There's some eggs. The eggs tell us what to do, or what we can do, and then bottles will instruct us how to use them here. Yeah, so I'm assuming most of the people that are going to watch this have played this game already, so that is why I'm skipping through uh, the text here pretty quickly. <laughs> and also because the text moves at an excruciatingly slow pace. <laughs> okay, so basically, you got to shoot eggs at the gorilla, and you got to avoid his, uh, his oranges that he throws at you. I think you can kind of cheese this, though. Or maybe not. And... There we go. Jigsaw numero dos. Thank you. Before we get that, we're just gonna go over here and collect this mummy token. And you see this, uh... This is called a witch switch here with Grunty's face on it. Uh, we can't use this right now, but we'll get a move here actually pretty soon. It's going to allow us to uh, get that, so we'll be back for that one. Jigsaw number two for this world. Actually, yeah. Is it? Yeah, I think. No, I said three. I don't know. 
I must have collected one before. Anyway. So up here, uh, you get to learn a new move. And you also get another extremely easy jigsaw piece. <laughs> That's Jiggy number four. So this is actually... This move that Bottles is about to teach us is one of the moves that you'll be using primarily throughout the game. And it is called the Talon Trot. It's basically the move that um, all speedrunners of this game are... <laughs> very glad exists. Because <laughs> if this did not exist, Banjo-Kazooie would probably be a very slow process. And it basically allows us to, uh... Like, if you weren't using the Talon Trot, you would slide down the slope pretty easily. But, with the Talon Trot, it allows you to move up steep slopes, like, like Bottle said. See so now he's bottles is just telling us that we've collected enough notes to be able to break the the seal on the note door, but we're going for a hundred on this world because, um, I mean it's <laughs> it's pretty easy to find all 100 notes in this world anyway, so we might as well go for the hundred. And get this jiggy. And I believe that is all the jiggy, or excuse me, all the uh, the musical notes that are down here. I think the rest of them are up in this area right here. Which actually... We better just go to talk to bottles and get the new move for this area. So then we will know all the moves in this game. Or all the moves for this world, I should say. This is called the Beak Buster. And yeah, there's nothing more that Bottles can teach us in this world, so he's just going to go back into his molehill. And basically, the Beak Buster allows us to do this. It's basically a ground pound move. These huts will have different things in them. Some of them have eggs, some of them have musical notes. There's going to be one that has a Jinjo inside, one that has an enemy inside. There's the one with the enemy. There's the Jinjo, and now we have collected enough Jinjos to be able to get a gold jigsaw piece. And a 1-up. And last but not least, the Jiggy. Okay, making good progress in this world so far. This totem pole here, he wants you to shoot blue eggs into his mouth. So what you want to do is... You want to shoot... Three, three eggs into his mouth, and then you want to jump up here and grab this... Honeycomb piece before you shoot the last one in. And then you can... Shoot the last one in, and you get a Jiggy. Oh. And there is... I need one more Mumbo token for the transformation. Another Jiggy. So I think that is one more Jiggy left in this world. Now I just gotta go find the other Mumbo token, which I believe is inside the Termite Hill here. And there's a lot of Termites out here. <laughs> termites or Ants or whatever you want to call them. Pretty sure it's inside here. Yep, it is. Okay, there we go. 
Now we can go see one of the reoccurring characters in this game. One of my personal favorites. His name is Mumbo. Hello, Mumbo. Yeah, before we want to do that, uh, we want to collect all the notes that are inside of his hut. And you want to jump up on here because there is... I'm not sure if there's any notes up here. It might just be eggs. I believe. Yep, just eggs. Okay. So you just stand here and... Oh, wrong button. There we go. And he turns us into a termite with a backpack. <laughs> yeah, and whenever you want to change back, you can just come back to his hut. But actually, I forgot to do something, so let me change back really quickly here. Okay. Alright, now we gotta go over here. Oh, that's a wall. <laughs> and if I'm able to get this right, I can get a honeycomb piece. And there we go. Okay, cool. Yep, I usually forget this. This is something I always forget when I'm in this world. Is uh, I always forget to uh, hit this ground pound switch over here. This witch switch. And what that will do is unlock a jiggy in the hub world in Grunty's Lair. And the hub world basically acts like a regular world itself. There will be 10 jiggies that you can find throughout the lair. And the way you unlock them is by, you know, basically just hitting which switches in the different worlds that will unlock jiggies in the hub world. So now that's done, let's go get turned back into the termite here. And we can get on with this mission. With this world, I should say. Okay, so I'm back to being a termite. And now we go inside what is called Ticker's Tower, I believe. Which is just a termite hill. A giant termite hill. And if you had not turned into the termite, you would not be able to come in here because the steeps would be too sloped. Keep steeps would be too slick. That's not right. <laughs> and so now we have all 100 notes in the game. Or not in the game, but in this world. So we've collected all the notes. And we're about to collect number 10 Jiggy here. And that is all the Jiggies for this world, so this world is officially complete. And after you're done, you can just jump down, because the transformations will take no fall damage for some reason. And then what you want to do... ...is you want to leave the world as the transformation. Don't turn back into Banjo yet. And then you want to head up here to where we unlocked the Jiggy through the Witch Switch and collect it. And this is the only way that you can collect it is as the transformation because, uh, yeah, that's uh, too steep to get up there as Banjo-Kazooie. And then if you just walk over here a little bit, he's going to tell you that the magic's getting weak. And if you walk further, you turn back into Banjo-Kazooie. 
So now we're back to Banjo. We've completed the first world, and we're getting we're going to get ready to explore the rest of uh, G or um, Grunty's Lair, basically. So that's going to be at the end of this first episode here of Let's Play Banjo Kazooie. I'm Outreach Brush, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. <laughs>